Hi, today's recipe, there's actually records of this dessert being made back in the 1700s. In some writings they found, they know the dessert is at least that old. This dessert is called Tusingu du Cell, which means bacon from heaven. And it gets that tradition from the fact that there's actually pork lard in this traditional recipe. Today I'm going to use some pork lard, some butter. If you're not comfortable with pork fat, you could substitute just all butter. This dessert comes from the northern part of Portugal in an area called Morsa. It's a town in the, near the Tres Montes area of Portugal, the Douro region. In this town, there's actually a statue, Porca de Morsa, which means like a female pig of Morsa. And this statue is thousands of years old. They believe it dates back to a Celtic community that actually lived there millennia ago and worshiped this pig. This dessert is really, it's not so much a cake, even some recipes I see it were referred to as a candy, but in the US we would refer to this as a tort because it's a flourless cake. There's no wheat flour in this, it's just almond flour and eggs. There's mainly two different ways this recipe is made. A lot of times it's just made with the almond flour and many recipes add this squash, it's called abobra de chia or Brazilian Portuguese, I believe it's abobra de gia. In the United States, it's the black seed gourd or the fig leaf gourd, kind of similar to a spaghetti squash. And what they do is they'll make a jam out of this. They'll cook the gourd and they'll cook it down and they'll add a lot of sugar, reduce it down some more. And they basically make jam out of this squash. And this jam you'll see added to a lot of different Portuguese recipes. And in a lot of the tocinho de sel, it's probably 50-50 where you'll see them use this jam and about half the time you will see they don't use the jam. But I couldn't find it anywhere on Amazon. I even check some Portuguese websites. So maybe next time I'm in Portugal, I'll have to pick some up. And if you're in Lisbon, there's a bakery there called Pastelaria Alcoa. I mentioned this in a previous recipe. It's the lady there, she specializes in these old, old dessert. These desserts made in convents and monasteries. Just, she does an incredible job preserving the history of these desserts and I highly recommend it if you visit Portugal. First thing you wanna do for your dessert is butter your mold and line the bottom of it with parchment paper. I cut out a piece of parchment paper, put it on the bottom, because this tort is pretty, could be kind of sticky, so you wanna make it as easy as possible to remove. We'll add a half a cup of water. If you have an eight inch cake pan, that's what you wanna use for this dessert. This one's about a six inch. I'm using this eight inch cake pan. I'm not gonna need it to be that high at all. There's no leavening, there's no yeast, so this isn't gonna rise much. It's only gonna be about as thick as your batter is when you pour it in there. I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees, so I'm gonna put in my one and a quarter cups of sugar. To that, I will add in a quarter teaspoon of granulated salt. And you just need this to come to a boil. And as soon as it comes to a boil, we'll add in our almond flour, butter, and lard. Lard is very common in old school cooking. You know, bakeries in the south of the United States, many pies were made with lard. Obviously, Mexican tradition of using lard in their refried beans or in their tortillas. So it was just a very common fat. Okay, my sugar came up to a boil, so I'll add in the pork fat. Add in the butter. I'll turn my flame down quite low. Put in my almond flour. After you add in the almond flour, you could turn the heat to a very low setting and you'll probably cook it for an additional two minutes. I'm gonna add some orange zest. Some recipes I've seen use a tiny bit of like a almond extract or an alcohol like Almoretto. I just had some leftover whole ground up almonds and so I didn't wanna throw that out. So half the almond flour was, was ground up almonds that still had the skin on it. And then I also used half just plain almond flour. You could use either or, I just wanna let you know why this looks a little darker. Cause if it has the skin on it, the almond flour looks a little darker. If it's, if it's completely skinless and they ground up the almonds, it'll look a little lighter. But again, it's, it's just a preference. You could use either one. You could make your own too. If you don't have almond flour, if you have a bunch of almonds that are sitting around, you just could put them in a the food processor and puree them until they turn into a powder or flour and use it that way. All right now I'm gonna add in the orange zest. That is optional, kind of, you know, just adds a little complexity to the dessert. Now I'll add in the two whole eggs and six egg yolks. 
everything should be ready to go at this point. You want to have your oven preheated and you want to keep on stirring as you put in your eggs. And so with most cakes, you want to cook them to an internal temperature of about 190 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit. But this, you know, there's no wheat flour, so I'm not worried about like gelatinizing a bunch of starch and getting it to provide structure. I mean, the main structure to this cake is the eggs. And eggs set, when they're in a solution like this of sugar, they set around 175. So I'm looking to pull this when it gets to about 190 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't want to overcook it. That in our mold. Right in our oven. If you want to check out another great dessert from northern Portugal, check out Pistege de Tintugal. Okay, you want to bake your cake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 177 degrees Celsius, for about 20 to 25 minutes. Or until the internal temperature of the tort is between 185 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to let your tosinho de sel cool off for about 20 to 30 minutes. All right, our cake is done cooling. I cut a little piece of cardboard out just to make like a little tray for it to sit on. That way it's easy to transport. So now traditionally this is dusted with a lot of powdered sugar. It does look like it pulled away from the sides nicely, but I'll just go around to make sure there's no stuck pieces. I sprayed this with a little nonstick spray and just put that in there, flip it over. Voila. Smells like a Minduish. I think we're on the right track here. Now you can make the famous Portuguese tort, bacon from heaven. It is smelling so good. Can't wait to dig in. Thanks for joining me. Now go cook for someone you love. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, again, I have a website called justcookwithmichael.com and I really recommend if you're gonna use these recipes to go to the website, it's much easier to print out. It's much better organized than looking at the notes section of YouTube.